There are two kinds of people in this world. The people who fail to do what they know they should, and those who keep doing things they know they shouldn't. Guess what? You're both. Hi, I'm your host, life and business coach, Marcy Barker, aka your loving kick in the pants. In this podcast, I'll teach you the six steps of my accountability code that will help you wake up with clarity and show up with aligned action steps that make follow through easy and peaceful. All right, let's jump in. Hello, my beautiful people. I am here with one of my favorite people. Last year, my business, I grew a lot and I changed my business from an LLC to an S Corp. And one of the reasons why I did that is because I wanted to add employees to my business. So this is my youngest employee. Um, FYI, my employees are all of my daughters. I have four daughters, Layla, Lexi, Liz, and Leah, and they range from eight to 14. So I have my vibes manager with us today. She's doing a little, what, what would you call that little dance? Yeah, a little dance. A little dance. (laughs) Fun fact about Leah is I can be super social on Instagram and trying to grow my business. And there's a handful of people that only engage with my Instagram if it's Leah. (laughs) So, all right. Thanks for being on my podcast. It's fun to be so. Are you nervous? Me. A little bit, kind oh, of. Okay. Did you know that when you were like three and four, people would tell me, your daughter needs to be the voice of cartoons and movies because your little voice was so cute? Um, I want to be an actor. Yeah? So. Good. Maybe you can be a voice actor, too. Okay. We just got done with our mother-daughter retreat, and what would you say was the best thing about that? The best thing, I, in my opinion, it was definitely the skits because so many people. Um, there was this bullying one. Wait, let's and, back up real yeah. quick. Can you tell everybody the theme of the retreat, where oh. it was, who came? You don't have to name their yeah. names, but give people an idea of what this retreat was about. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, this retreat was about creating confidence. It was a, it was a mother-daughter retreat. The theme was like butterflies and creating confidence because we had bun uh we all got a butterfly sweater. So yeah. So what was the reason we did a mother daughter retreat, would you say? Um to help young girls create confidence. Good. How many girls were there? About ten because there were twenty people there. Yeah. Good. Twelve yeah. twelve girls. Do you feel like you developed more confidence after being there? Yeah. How so? Because I was just talking to a bunch of people and, like, getting out of my space. Like, my comfort space is, like, where I live. And then I just drive two hours be like... (laughs) They can't see your face, but Leah is, like, showing off her face and and stuff. Yeah, um, I'll just be like, hello, everyone. You're a pretty outgoing person already. So why were the skits important? I don't really know why the skits were important. They were just, some of them were really funny. Yeah. That's probably why they were my favorite part, because there was this one about bullying. Bullying? Yeah, yeah, sorry, bullying. Okay. It was like, wow, I drew my best art ever. And then a bully walks past, and and the bully's like, ew, this is so bad, and then rips the paper up, and she's like, no. And then two years later, when she's in seventh grade, I would be like, wow, this is my best piece ever. And then the bully that's from fifth grade would be like, wow, that's some really good art. Liz, my sister, I wasn't in the skit, but my sister Liz said, thanks. I used to stop drawing because these bullies in sixth grade, wait, you look like them. And she's like, yeah, sorry about that. Um, And she's like, it's okay. I use my bullies as inf- inspiration. Yeah, inspiration okay. and motivation. And then she shows everyone the paper, and it's say no to bullying. Oh. <laughs> I remember when the girl who played the bully she apologized and she said, "Oh, I was just going through a phase. I'm sorry." Oh yeah. Have you ever been bullied at school? A little bit, yeah, but it stopped like immediately when I asked her to stop. Oh. And probably wasn't trying to bully me. 
She was probably just like... Well, she wasn't saying anything mean. She's just like, you're so dramatic. Like, you know, ruder way than that. Um, and she just called me mean names, and that's pretty much it. But I don't take it personally. Yeah. I don't take anything uh, mean personally. The only thing, I, the only things I take personally are the nice things because it can help you feel a lot better. Oh yeah, I remember you told me that when I was showering last week. Yeah. Because we were prepping for our creating confidence retreat, so I asked you how you develop confidence. If you could give the listeners one or two tips for creating confidence, what would they be? Um, don't take anything rude personally and try to give other people advice on how to do that. That advice you should try to start doing because I would always tell all of my friends, don't listen to what other people say. Only listen to what you think about themselves. But I could never do that myself. Um, until I learned how to. So... Can you give me an example? Basically, you probably just want to, like, when someone's being rude to you, you want to, like... You want to listen to them, but, like, no, don't take it personally. You just want to hear what they say, and then if you don't like what they say, you walk away. You just want to hear them fully, so it's like, you're ugly, but... I'm sure you can always be prettier. Like, you're not <laughs> too ugly. It's just, it can actually turn out to be a compliment that they don't mean to be something rude. They just don't know how to give you that compliment. Oh. So you always want to hear what they say, but you don't want to say, oh, you're going to be rude to me. Bye. Oh, so maybe not jump to conclusions yeah. or assume that people are just going to be rude. Yeah. Don't jump to conclusions. Yeah, Hear I like that. what they that. say, and then if you don't like it, walk away and don't take it personally. Yeah, because sometimes I hear things like that, and it is easy to just assume that people are going to be rude to yeah. you. Hey, listeners. The message of waking up and showing up is yours for the taking. In fact, it's free. I've recorded my entire audiobook, and I'd love for you to consume it between episodes. Head to marcybarker.com to get instant access to the accountability code wake up and show up. All right, let's jump back in. In my book, oh, you guys don't even know the steps of the accountability code, do you? No. That's like our next training. We yeah. need to make sure that all of my employees know the steps of the accountability code. The only thing that I know in your book is um, the fresh start thing. So real quick, there is a story in my book called Fresh Start, and I used an example about this story about Leah. Do you want to tell it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was really little. I think it was my first Halloween, right? It was your second, so you yeah. were 18 months old. Yeah, so I was 18 months old, and my mom would take us trick-or-treating, and I would hold on to the candy and I would not let anyone take it out of my hand and put it in my bag. So when I saw better candy... Like, like more would... colorful candy, I would throw it back in and take that handful. And so I would always be left with a handful of candy. And, and you would never put it you yeah. would never put it in your bag. Yeah. So all of my sisters would have so much candy. I'm like, why do I only have a handful? <laughs> do you remember what the rest of that story is about? Um holding a grudge and when you don't let anyone um, and take it from you, then it can turn into, I'm going to say, a mental illness. Oh, wow. It could. <laughs> it definitely could. When we don't process things or we don't release them. You are right. I believe in that story. I do talk about being bitter and like holding on to something. And, um, and if you are holding on to a problem that you have, then you're obviously always going to have that problem. Yeah. But if you're able to release it and let it go, then you 
your hands are not only empty of problems, but now you have room for opportunities that you actually want. So as a mom, I was I was OK that you weren't accumulating candy because I didn't want you <laughs> candy. But, you know, you go trick or treating to go get tons of candy. So it was just really funny. Oh, um, in the middle of the summer, remember how I used to go trick or treating with plastic batting like trick or treat? Yes. Yeah. When just I like candy, so it's, it'll be like trick or treat every it, single. It's funny when you talk about your comfort zone too, because I feel like your comfort zone is massive. Like you're very comfortable with a lot of things and talking to people. Yeah. What would you say to people who need help getting out of their comfort zone? Where's a good place to start? Try going camping because it's one of my favorite things to do and I'm sure you'll love it. But one thing, um, if you don't like bugs, then I would suggest not putting your... I would bring a clothing line that you can put in your tent because... um, <laughs> uh, Are you talking about the swimming suits? Yeah, swimming suits because um, one got full of uh, earwigs and I had to clean them out. Because Lexi was such a scaredy cat, so... So if somebody wants to get out of their comfort zone, they should try adventurous things. Yeah. You know what? I'm glad that you said that, because do you know what our theme is for our next mother-daughter retreat? Camping? Close. Oh. Um, it's under the sun adventure. Good enough. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be really fun. So what do you? what did you notice in the other girls at the retreat? Did you notice any of them getting out of their comfort zone or, or being confident? A lot of them were comf confident, well, I think, because I don't know what they look like when they're not confident. I don't know how to tell if they're confident or not because I've never... It's like they're just new people that I've never met before. So I have no idea if they were confident or not. But, um, yeah, you bring up a good yeah. point because it's important to get to know people before you just judge if yeah. they are confident or not. Because do you want to know a secret? What? I am very outgoing, but Daddy is not. You know yeah, how he's I, just very quiet? I, I know that. I've I, known him <laughs> since I was born, okay? <laughs> I used to believe that because he wouldn't talk to people like I did, I believed that he wasn't confident. And then I took this personality test by a coach that I like and respect, and I... I scored a 97% on confidence. And I was like, obviously. That and makes sense. I told Daddy, I said, take take this quiz and see what happens. And when you fill out the quiz, the results get sent to the coach. And so when I when Daddy took the test, his results got sent to the coach. And the coach said, Hey, do you know do you know who this girl is, Aubrey Barker? And I was like, oh. <laughs> I said, Aubrey is my husband. I had him take the test. And guess what daddy scored on confidence? And 100? He scored 98%, so higher than me. <laughs> By one. And I was like, no, I don't believe it, because I just assumed that he wasn't confident because he his confidence doesn't look the same as mine. Yeah. So what would, you, what would you say to people who maybe are not as outgoing? How can they develop confidence? Maybe if they don't want to go camping to get out of their comfort zone. How can each person develop confidence at their own level and pace? Um, sometimes what we do is every Sunday we have people over for dinner. Oh. But we don't do that a lot. Not every Sunday, but just once in a while we Yeah, have we're trying people. to get back into it, huh? Yeah. I love having people over for dinner. It's fun. Okay, so that would be one tip that somebody can do? Yeah, you can stay out. Um, sorry, you can um, stay at home, but you can have people over. So it's kind of getting out of your comfort zone. Also, talking to new people and maybe making a, new, a few new friends. So. Yeah, I like that. That's really important. Um, one thing that I learned years ago was if you want to make friends, just invite people to do things that you're already doing in your own life, just because it makes it easier. Yeah. So, okay, what is your favorite thing about working for my company? My favorite thing is definitely that um, I get paid 
so high for the things I do. <laughs> I love money, but money can't make someone happy, so don't try that. <laughs> but you want to know what I loved is that you started asking people the same question I like to ask people. What's your favorite part about your job? Mm-hmm. And I, I got that from you, though. Yeah, and a lot of people actually do say the paycheck. That's all they like about their job. So I hope that we find some other reasons that you like working for my company. I mean, some of them are that. So it's 50-50 paycheck and, and planning retreats because, like, we get to meet so many new people. And it's fun to just, like, because our retreat has a big, big, big water park by it. And it has a hot tub. So the perks. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> the travel perks. That's good. You know, it is really cool because the things you're learning right now at eight years old are the same things I learned two or three years ago. And that's really, really cool. Like, you can just go plan a retreat. I mean, obviously, you'll need some help with this upcoming retreat. Plus, I need money. Yeah, that is true. Every business needs to make money to function. So I'm glad that I'm teaching you all that, too. Yeah, I mean, like, I get paid, so I'm probably most likely going to be able to start business. Yeah. Because I'm getting paid so much for what I do. 20 bucks an hour. (laughs) I get so much because what people get paid usually is, like, maybe 8 to 10 bucks per hour. Yeah. And so it's crazy how much I get paid. You're pretty lucky. Yeah. Okay, but let's let people know the whole story. Do you get to keep all of the money that you make? No, I kind of just make 10 bucks an hour because 50% of it have, has to go into um tithing. Well, we do Sorry, 50% yeah. spend. Yeah. 40%... 40% save yeah save and 10 percent tithing tithing and since i added you as legit employees oh yeah i have to pay taxes now you do have to pay taxes too (laughs) but you'll probably get all the money back because that's how that's how taxes work we're we're being strategic over here okay so with your job responsibilities what would you say if you could have your pick what responsibilities do you want when it comes to planning this upcoming retreat? Because you got to split the work between your sisters. But if you could have your pick, what would you want to be in charge of? Food, where I get to sleep, <laughs> and um, where everybody gets to sleep. Bedroom assignments. Yeah, bedroom assignments. Okay, so you can help me with the landing page when we when we sell. Do you know what a landing page is? No, but um, it sucks. Because I have to sleep on an air mattress. Yeah, you do. I think that's the plan this time. So food, do you want to go shopping for food? Or do you want to put the menu together? or? I want to put the menu together because then I can just make the whole cheat salad. <laughs> salad. <laughs> I love salad. Yeah, salad is your favorite food. Yeah. What toppings do you like on your salad? Toppings? Is that what you call it? Toppings? Topping sounds like it's just for dessert, but you treat salad like dessert. What do you like on your salad? Okay, I call it a Caesar sauce, not Caesar dressing, so Uh, I like Caesar sauce. Um, (laughs) Eggs, probably 70% of the time. Okay. Because there's a couple of salads. Oh, and what's your most favorite thing that you made sure we put on the menu last time? And Emily, our chef? Mini corn. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> mini corn. Mini corn. You could eat that all day long. Mini baby corn. <laughs> yeah. It's so, so good. We obviously will not make our whole menu salad, Aww. but that's one of the perks of planning your own retreat is that you get to decide all of the different things that you do. Because guess what? I have been to a retreat before. All they had was pasta and breadsticks for every meal. That seems like the perfect perfect meal for me no it was no fruit no veggies and i was like no that is not right so we do try to make our menus healthy but you guys planned the last one so we had macaroni and cheese and hot dogs (laughs) but we did make sure to add lots of broccoli because we love broccoli my favorite thing about fruit though is that when you're thirsty you can just like oh here's a cutie time to like 
put a hole in it um, and just like suck all the juice out of it and then eat it. Yeah, did you do that with your cantaloupe today? Um, you ate all, a half a cantaloupe today. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> My mom bought it and I'm like, well, time to eat it. She just bought it. Chop, chop. <laughs> so with creating confidence, what's the most memorable thing you experienced at the mother-daughter retreat? There's two things. Okay. Being in the hot tub and um, mm. in the skits. The skits were my completely favorite part. Yeah. I think one of the favorite parts of our clients who wrote us feedback was the cards. Doing all the cards. Oh, yeah. Will you so explain many that people, to our listeners? Basically, we, we all sat in a circle. There were blankets under the desk. Sorry, the blankets matter, just so you know. So we would go in a circle, and our moms and us would stand up there, and we would take a blanket from under the desk and give it to them. And then we would all say something we like about them. Well, we don't all have to say something we like about them. Just a lot of people were um, giving them, like, little index cards with stuff on them that they like. Um, about compliments. Them. Yeah, and compliments. Gratitude. And I, got, like I got so many, and I can't read, like, half of them. <laughs> like, their handwriting is good, but half of them were in cursive. And, I mean, like, I know the whole alphabet in cursive. It's just hard to remember. Yeah, so you got cards to take home. Yeah. What made that special for everybody, do you think? Um, probably that they have a reminder that people have confidence in them and that they are loved. And Yeah, that's good. Do you remember our guest speaker? Do you remember her name? I think it was like something like Christina. Alicia. Ali- oh, yeah, sorry. close. But, um... She was, uh, it was something like the Hope Hero. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, we all got our mini shoe keychain thing. Yeah. So she, as a reminder to step into your hero journey. When you drew a picture, remember you were in the group with the youngest uh, girls? Oh, what, yeah. What did you draw a picture of? Myself. Yeah. And I'm a person that, um, helps people feel confident in themselves. Because I think that would be a pretty good job for me. Probably always get a promotion. (laughs) That's why we call you our vibes manager. This podcast, do you know the name of this podcast? Marcy Berger and her four four daughters. (laughs) Nope, that's not what it's called. It's called Your Loving Kick in the Pants. Oh. You knew that, Why is it like kick in the butt? Well, because kick in the pants is a pretty universal expression for like making you do something and that's what accountability means is Uh doing something that you know you're supposed to do but i am such a great coach that i don't shame or guilt my clients into doing what they need to so that's where i got my nickname your loving kick in the pants have i ever given you a loving kick in the pants You've given me a kick in the pants and you loved me. <laughs> what does accountability mean to you? Not a lot because because I don't always do the stuff that I um that I need to. Join the club. Like um when I am told to clean, I'll be like, no thanks, go to my room. And be like, <laughs> ooh, I have a tablet in here. So I'm going to have to teach you the process of the accountability code. Can I tell you, can I quiz you and see if you know what each piece means? I'll try, but you have to give me like two answers and I'll see which one is right because I have no idea what the steps are. Okay. I'll just see what like. Okay. I think you'll get most of them. So the first step is reflection. Okay. What does that mean? Reflection. Do you remember? Oh, even at our retreat, Liz did. Oh, mirrors. Reflection mirrors. Yeah. So what do you think it means to reflect? To, like, um, say... Is it, like, an affirmation? Um, and, like, say, I used to be this, but now I'm so much better than my old self. And so you can always compare yourself to your old self and say, I am so much better than I was. Because maybe you made some mistakes, and that's fine. Everyone makes mistakes. It's impossible to not make a mistake. Mm-hmm. And you can say, I made this mistake, and I'm better than that. So 
Yeah, perfect. I'm, I'm perfect. High five. So that's exactly what reflection is. is oh, it is? Yeah, comparing or reflection is thinking on your goals and your values and your problems yeah. within just, yourself. Yeah. So Just don't dwell on your mistakes or you'll make more because you're like, I did this, I can't do this. But then you'll end up doing it because you're thinking about it so much that you can't um, say, okay, this is the plan, follow the plan, and keep thinking about the plan. Yeah. You're dwelling on one mistake, and it's making you make more. Perfect. So you're on the right track. The second step of the accountability code is humility. Do you know what humility is? It's kind of a tough one. Um, Like embarrassment? That's humiliated. That's oh. pretty close, though. Okay. So humility is a modest view of who you are related to who you can be, or recognizing that everything you are is because of God. Yeah. Wait, and this is the third or the second? This is the second step, yeah. humility. So um, after you've looked in the mirror and looked at yourself, humility is saying, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me my life. Thank you for helping me accomplish the things that I have done. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being patient with me when I make mistakes. Yeah. But um, I think one and two should be switched because you said the second step is kind of like saying I can be this person mm -hmm. instead of being this person so they could so they should be swapped because then when you're that person you can say oh look at my old self I'm so much better than this yeah so they could probably be switched I like that feedback can I tell you why they're not switched why because reflection is something that you do non-stop you can't yeah. escape yourself you're always talking to yourself you always have something going on in your head. Yeah. That's normal. That's natural. That's human. But humility is to bring God into it. Yeah. Do you always bring God into every thought that you have? No, but I do think about him. I say my prayers every night. Oh, good. That's a good habit. Yeah. So that's really, really good. You're going to think about something, and then you bring God into it. And then the third step is planning. And you talked about planning a little bit. Kind of. Just don't dwell on a mistake or you make more when your plan was originally to do this but instead you're being uh instead you're doing this and it turns into a distraction from it's like um when there's a light shining in your eye but you're thinking about something else so you're blind when there's still a light shining in your eye like metaphorically yeah so planning is saying hey i made a mistake but my, my plan now is I'm going to do it this way yeah. this time. Yeah. So after you have felt certain things, then you can say, okay, I'm ready to, to do something different now. Yeah. The fourth step of the accountability code is implementing. Do you know what that means? No. Can you explain it? <laughs> yes. Implementing is putting into use your desired skills or values. So. So what's something you're trying to do? more often keep my room clean so i can sign up for that ninja warehouse thing oh yeah you have your goal to pay yeah. for that summer camp 26 i mean 27 bucks that's all i need you're almost there i did need 25 bucks but i spent two bucks on a drink <laughs> okay so implementing is putting into you skills or values what skills do you need to keep your room clean maybe like picking up trash when there's garbage on the floor Maybe, like, cleaning it once and then just not getting anything on the floor. Mm -hmm. Like, you're on the floor. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So implementing are things that you actually do. You don't talk about them. You actually do them. Okay. Like, um, stop dreaming. Just do it. Exactly. The fifth step of the accountability code is commitment. Do you know what a commitment is? idea like I know what it is it's just like at the tip of my mind where I can't think of it but I know what it is I kind of quizzed you today when I took out the trash and I said can, I, can you put another bag in the can and what did you say I said I will try my best uh -huh. because it's so hard to just get that one part on it <laughs> the, the last, last part <laughs> so with a commitment <laughs> item a commitment is black or white that means you either did it or you didn't. So I took the trash out. I would call it ones and zeros because like um, ones and zeros usually including it's like ones are on, uh, zeros are off. Ah. Off on, off on. Ah, I did not know that. 
You must have a programmer daddy. Dad, um, I actually didn't learn it from dad or me. Um, I actually learned it in computer class at school. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so commitment, I took the trash out and I came back in. A commitment would be you either put the, the bag in the trash can or you didn't. Those are commitments. It's very clear would, and there's proof if you did it or not. I like, would say like I'm a point five because <laughs> I, like not like camera point five, like in the middle because I did it, but like I couldn't do it all the way. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> So, that's a really good point, and you did try. Yeah, and I tried my best, and you helped me, and we got it done. Yeah, and it's the effort that you put in that makes you accountable. So, good job. The last step of the accountability code is feedback. Do you know what feedback is? Yeah, um, and when you were on your call, I can't remember when this, but you were talking about how you always want to say, thanks for your feedback, not saying, like anything else because that can make people like mad at you like not um my website is great don't you dare call it bad so you were listening to one of my calls yeah because i was in the big room trying to do my own thing okay you have a good memory because you are exactly right feedback is information used as a basis for improvement and when i coached with my coach marshall goldsmith he's the highest paid executive coach in the world guess how much it costs to work with him 1.6 million dollars i was gonna say like five hundred thousand. no a lot more than that but he's the one that taught me that you say thank you very much for feedback so let's say that you set a goal and you tried to be accountable and you hit it then how does that make you feel? What feedback do you get? What feedback did you get that would help you keep moving forward if you set a goal and you reached it? Um, you could say, um, I did this and that's completely great. I reached my goal, but maybe now I want to do this. So let's keep trying and get the things I need to do this and this and this to mm-hmm. all do this. Yeah. What if you set a goal and you didn't reach it? What feedback? Then you could you say, notice? um, that was maybe too hard of a goal. Let's try something smaller and we can work the way up to that. Yeah. I think that's perfect. I think that you will be an accountability coach in no time. Would you like coaching people? Yeah, I mean, like, um, I would like it. It's just one thing that I don't like. Um, I've learned this from you. Okay. Um, sometimes you don't have enough time to spend time with someone or um, or do anything because you have stuff planned. Like, oh, I have to get on a call with this person, and I have to text this person, and I have to do all of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you you. Yeah. You might want a, a yeah. passive income stream. Yeah. But um, I'm really grateful for these, like, last three days where we have spent a lot of time together. Yeah, spring break. We went break. to the movies. Mm-hmm. And then we went to Neptune. Yeah. And that's the only thing we've done so far. But I want to do more with you. Cause yeah. it's fun. I Same. I like spending time with you. Same. I love you. Okay. Thank you for being on my podcast. You're welcome. My youngest ever guest. I will probably never have another eight-year-old on my podcast. Because I don't like them as much as I like you. (laughs) If there is one last thing you could tell everybody listening to the podcast, what would you like that to be? Um, I've been waiting to say this, but I think it's a little too late. But, um, when my mom was talking about, um, getting out of your comfort zone... I don't remember this at all, but my whole family said I did it. We were in, I think, Costco, and I went up to a stranger and I hugged him. Or was it a girl? I... It was actually the parking lot of Walmart when you hugged um, that man. I do not remember that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you walked around the car and you hugged a man. And we were like, Leah, what are you doing? 
but you can finish your story. Yeah. What about that hug? I don't remember, so I can't say it, but um, I, I feel like I used to be able to just know when people needed a hug, and so I would hug them because you told me once that um, I went up to someone in the store and I gave them a hug. I think it was a girl this time. And she's like, oh, she probably thinks I'm her grandma or something. And you're like, you look nothing like her grandma. Um, she probably just thought you um, needed a hug. And she's like, yeah, I really did, actually. Yeah, that was, yeah, that lady was, it was at Chuckarama that time. Is that Chuckarama? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. That makes sense. We don't go there a lot, but, like, <laughs> we go there a lot. So what about that story do you want listeners to pay attention to? You want to put yourself in other people's shoes. Like, I didn't do that. I just saw they needed a hug. Like, try to read the room before you do anything. Like, mm. read the vibe in the room. <laughs> That's why you're the vibes manager. <laughs> yeah, read the room before you do anything. Mm, I like that. Well, it was awesome to have you on my podcast. Yeah. All right, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. And don't forget... I'll be here next Wednesday with another episode of Your Loving Kick in the Pants. Woo -woo. Bye bye. Have a good day. Hey, friends. I want to thank you for listening to this episode of Your Loving Kick in the Pants. If you got any value out of this episode, I would love for you to drop me a review or share with a friend what you learned. All right. I'll see you next Wednesday for Your Loving Kick in the Pants.